Thank you so much to the African Center for Strategic Studies uh, for the invitation to join this very important conversation. And I would also like to extend my greetings to the participants um, from the security sector who are participating in this seminar. And thanks to Professor Nate Allen, who has also covered immense grounds on the cyber threats landscape in Africa. Now, um, when we generally talk about cybersecurity, I think it's always important to contextualize on regional perspectives, and that is why I'm always excited that we are able to discuss Africa. And this is very important because when you think about cybersecurity, you find that the reality of developing states, for example, those in the African region, which are at the end of the digital divide, tend to lack the adequate capacity, skills, and infrastructure to effectively um, ensure cyber resilience. I've just come out of a UN Security Council meeting and that subject resonated as to how the lack of capacities is sort of hindering um, challenges, uh, posing challenges for detecting, defending against or responding to malicious cyber activities and why it is important that we consider cyber threats in the context of country specific and regional specific realities. But however, even when we think about the challenges in African context, it doesn't mean that nothing is happening in the region. And I want to take some time first and provide a contextual background of the cybersecurity efforts in the region. So the African Union Commission generally started exploring an agenda on digital transformation in relation to cybersecurity with the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa 2020-2030 by stipulating that cybersecurity is a cross-cutting theme of the Digital Transformation Strategy. And if you look at the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, it highlights the need for greater capacity to detect and mitigate cyber attacks in the region. Now, in 2017, the AUC as well, the African Union Commission, developed guidelines on security of internet infrastructure in Africa, but most importantly, went ahead to adopt cybersecurity as a flagship program of the African Union Agenda 2063. Of course, this shows a clear ambition of the region's uh, interest to achieve stability in the cyber domain. In 2019 as well, the African Union Commission now appointed the African Union Cybersecurity Experts Group with a key mission to undertake cybersecurity capacity building initiatives. And we've been working with diverse sectors to ensure cybersecurity in the region. I must not forget the sub-regional organizations, the regional economic communities like ECOWAS, like the SADAC, EAC, particularly the ECOWAS and SADAC that have made robust laws, uh, policies, strategies in relation to cybersecurity. Importantly, I must not forget the UN Global Cybercrime Convention process. As we speak, um, for the past two years, there have been efforts to promulgate a UN Global Cybercrime Convention. And an African country is chairing the process. Algeria is chairing the process for the UN Global Cybercrime Convention. And we're hoping that after one more session this summer, we can have a Global Cybercrime Convention. Egypt and Nigeria are also vice chairs in that process, which is showing the strides that the African region is making. Nate also talked about the Malabo Convention. In 2014, the African Union Commission adopted the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity and Personal Data Protection, the Malabo Convention. Now, that convention is sort of a guideline to ensure a unified regulatory approach to promoting cyber resilience in the region. It entered into force in June 2023. So far, we have only 16 ratifications out of the 55 AU member states. The other important effort in the region, which Nate has actually mentioned, is the common African position on application of international law to cyberspace. We are seeing a huge amount of cyber threats in the region. There are questions about defining what use of force is, what armed attack under cyberspace in cyberspace means, what self-defense in cyberspace will mean. What would it mean um, when we talk about due diligence? non-intervention, peaceful settlement of dispute in cyberspace. That is why the common African position on the application of international law to the use of ICTs in cyberspace was adopted in January. 
I must emphasize that the Common African position has a section on capacity building technical assistance, and this is very important for the security sector. Again, Africa is the first um, region to have a more regional approach or have a regional statement voicing the need for international cooperation or cooperation among sectors in the region. Nate has already talked about the emerging trends you see in terms of threats, but there, there are actually two, three of them I want to emphasize on, which is the attacks we see on the African Union Commission headquarters since last year, where email systems are compromised. We also saw in Kenya, for example, the huge attacks um, on the e-services system of Kenya, which was described as a high-profile cyber attack on the e-citizens platform, which incapacitated access to over 5,000 government services from ministries, country agencies, or government agencies. And of course, we heard about a group called Anonymous Sudan, which was creating this havoc across Kenya and other parts of Africa. Few weeks, few months ago, as well in Malawi, um, the government had to suspend the issuing of passports following a cyber attack on the immigration services computer networks. The attackers demanded ransom from the government, and this was even termed a serious national security breach by the government. Why do I highlight these issues? It begins to show you the very important national security dimensions of cybersecurity. Before now, um, most times people will think of cybersecurity in the context of fraud, mainly fraud and you know issues like hacking but then it is now going far beyond where actors are even holding states to ransom demanding ransom payments for illicit activities and there are so many processes for example the counter ransomware initiative where kenya for example nigeria is taking center stage in trying to define how the international community can curb ransomware. But then apart from that, there are specific and significant issues for Africa in this context. When you think about it from the security sector, you begin to see the blurry lines between the responsibility of state actors and the responsibility of non-state actors. And even how the dynamics of these emergent cyber threats are now adding more challenges to the existing conflicts in the region. So we begin to see organized terrorists and extremist groups being enabled further by cyber technologies. But that is not all. There is also the context of international peace and security, which touches upon the security sector. We also see how states reach international human rights on the alibi of cyber security, eroding international law obligations, which are imposed upon state actors. We also see this and misinformation, which Nate has already talked about, but again, aggravated by AI in such circumstances. So therefore, it means that when we think about this, we also have to think about the complex interaction of the inequalities in the region and ask ourselves social and political questions as to why um, there is the increase in cyber threats and cyber activities, and perhaps think about it in terms of the realities of the region. Again, there is also a seeming lack of awareness of the obligations related to non-intervention, due diligence, and the peaceful settlement of disputes. However, um, I must also add that when we think about this, they are not just legal, technical, and operational problems, but again, social, economic, and political realities. So what, apart from the situation of cybersecurity in Africa, I think the first important thing to do is to define the role of the security sector. What exactly is the role of the security sector in terms of cybersecurity? And Nate made a very important point when he said the unconventional nature of cybersecurity demands unconventional responses. It is not the traditional security issue we have known where the security sector deals with um, these issues in the way it was dealt with traditionally. There are changes to these dynamics. For example, there is now the need to think about capacity building, to think about international cooperation, to think about involving private um, sector. These are all dynamics that may not necessarily be the same in the way security sector approached traditional security issues before the emergence of cyber threats. So how do we define the role of the security sector? I would always look at this based on three perspectives, legal, technical, and operational. In terms of legal, 
when we think of the role of security sector, we look at them as sort of allowing the operationalization of the laws and the regulations and the policies on cyber security in the region. Advancing cyber security through policies, advancing cyber security cooperation through policies, investing in cyber security policy making at the right sector. But in this regard, it is also important for African countries to think about very substantive procedural laws harmonized with regional and international standards that specify the role of the security sector, particularly in terms of enforcement. What can the security sector do? What data can be captured? What data can be preserved? What are the standards for data protection? What are the standards for human rights, even for the security sector? This should clearly be defined in terms of laws and policies in the region. Again, to improve the legal framework and accountability for cybersecurity, we can then strengthen the laws, but then update them because of the changing nature of technologies and the sector we are talking about to address evolving cyber threats. If you look across the African region, for example, you find that sometimes there are particular regulations that do not capture certain aspects of cyber crimes. You begin to ask, for example, should we focus on cyber-enabled crimes or cyber-dependent crimes? Some countries favor cyber-enabled, some favor both, and even prosecute cyber terrorism. So sometimes it's a question of do we want to expand what we prosecute or do we want to limit what we prosecute? I think that whatever it is, we should also consider state obligations under international law. The other aspect is technical. How do we enhance access to modern and effective cybersecurity technologies? And that is a huge gap in Africa, you can agree with me, and it is a challenge for the security sector. Not having the right infrastructure limits the capacity to promote cybersecurity and cyber resilience in the region. We must have the ability to detect, respond to cyber threats and attacks in real time. And that is why the governments must invest, the security sector must invest in the right technology and as enhance access to modern and effective cybersecurity technologies. Again, to improve the ability to respond, security sectors in the African region must also establish cybersecurity incident response and management framework. Of course, this would also involve developing incident response plans and establishing incident response teams. But it doesn't end there. What we see in Africa is a lack of coordination amongst the computer emergency response teams. We also see that for certain states, there are no sectoral and intersectoral computer emergency response teams. I always say Ghana is an example of a country that has not only set up a national computer emergency response team, but have also encouraged sectoral sets. So therefore, in terms of the security sector, states must set up coordinated prevention, detection, mitigation, and response mechanism that also allows information sharing. But I'll also add that states should support the creation of regional and continental computer security incident response team that way we can have that sort of viability at the regional level. I know Nate and Abdul Hakim, he just talked about the paper, has, um, they've written an article, research on comprehensive cybersecurity strategy. I just want to add that it will be important for the African Union at the level, at the regional level, to create a regional cybersecurity strategy, as well as promote 247 points of contact. This is something else that is important for the security sector. Again, another important aspect is organizational. And I just want to add um, to points um, that Nate has already established that we have to think about security sector partnership in Africa. Another challenge usually in terms of that is a lack of practical operational cooperation. On paper, this cooperation tend to exist, but when you have conversations with members of the security sector, you usually hear that there is a lack of operational cooperation when information is needed for sharing and when technical assistance is needed. And sometimes this is based on apprehensions of sovereignty and the fact that certain states are afraid um, that you know their sovereignty may be affected. The other point you find in terms of security sector partnership is partnership with the private sector. You also hear security sector or law enforcement officers alleging that, for example, they do not get responses from 
the tech companies or the private sector, for example, Meta, or for example, um, Google, when they need particular information. That is a challenge as well. But then you find that there is a question of security for the security sector in itself. I've been at a meeting and someone from Meta said, you find that security sector personnel may be using Gmail accounts. How do you even believe that they are members of a security sector of a government? So if charity must surely begin at home and then those are homeworks we have to do as a region in terms of cyber security. We also see that sort of cooperation between Interpol and Afripol um, through funds of international partners like government of the UK and of course the US as well. Afripo, um, Interpol has been able to work with Afripo and develop a particular cyber security mandate, establishing that sort of practical operational cooperation. And through the Afripo, Interpol has been working and enhancing capacity, enhancing law enforcement with the security sector in Africa. But again, on our own, it is important that we provide valuable platforms for such liaison at the national level. So while Afripol is there at the regional level, we must be willing to enhance this cooperation with Afripol and Interpol. It is also important to look at developing cooperation strategies amongst them. And this is why national cybersecurity strategies are important. Institutions are very, very important, and that is something that is lacking in Africa. If you look at the Malabo Convention, it expressly provides that you should have national cybersecurity authorities. But then in terms of the security sector, there are examples all around the globe of where you have national cybersecurity centers apart from just authorities. We see them across the globe. There is none in Africa at the regional level. It is also important for national security sectors to have national cybersecurity centers in various countries in Africa. This will help particularly for sharing info information as well as capacity building. It is not enough to have a regulatory framework. It is not enough to say we have Malabo conventions without having institutions in place. A Malabo convention or a cybersecurity convention will not automatically resolve the cyber threats within the AU boundaries. What needs to be taken into consideration when accessing the cyber threats capacities or capabilities are amongst others institutional capabilities and leadership. This is why institutions are important. It is also important to find the right balance between technical activity, but also high level institutional mechanisms and policy driven ambition so that cybersecurity personnel are not only skilled in their respective fields, but are also capable of making high impact decisions when it comes to managing threats. So good leadership oversight, clearly defined roles and responsibilities that underscore cooperation will be very, very important. I would also touch upon international cooperation. Um, the UN um, established the UNGGE some few years back through various sessions, and the UNGGE came up with norms of responsible state behavior. The UN norms of responsible state behavior are various norms that stipulate what states can do as principles, as guidelines, to amount to responsible behavior in cyberspace. If you look at the norms of responsible state behavior, apart from many other things that touch upon the role of security sector, it also mandates states to cooperate in developing and applying measures to increase stability, security, and to prevent ICT practices that are acknowledged to be harmful or that may pose threats to international peace and security. Dr. Um, Adjifo, if I Adjifo, um, thank you so much so far, but do you mind rounding off to allow enough time for the participants who are aching to ask questions to engage with you? Thank you. I was just rounding up in one minute to say that, yes, the security sector has its role. However, um, a multi-stakeholder approach is very important. So finally, I will just say that in as much as the security sector has a primary role for cybersecurity, it is important to engage civil society, private sector, and every other sector, because the nature of cyberspace must cause us to think beyond traditional notions of cyber traditional notions of security, as well as the military aspects of security, and think of a more people-centered approach. Thank you very much.